So in this video, I want to start talking about waves in a, in a more mathematical way. So say we have our orange string again, and there's some wave moving, some sort of wave is going on on this string. And before I do anything else, I want to define a coordinate system just so, just so I can talk a little more easily about it. So this upward direction we'll call y, this horizontal direction we'll call x, the direction x. So I can move along in the x direction and each piece of string has its own x value. None of them, none of them are on top of each other in the x, in the x direction. So say, say I pick this, this piece of string here. This piece of string at, at, at x will have a value of y and the, the value of y describes how high it is or how, how its position up and down at that point in time. And for the moment we're assuming that this is, is frozen in time. We've just taken a picture of the of the string and it's and it's not moving around. But so we we look at this value of x, it has some value of y. And the same for any other any other piece of string, it has a certain value of x and a certain value of y. And so we can write down a function that describes our wave. For any value of x, we can plug it in here, and and the value of y will pop out. And and, and we can do that for any any value, and that will that will describe our wave, our picture in time of this wave. Now let's try to use some of our physical intuition to come up with some some requirements on this function. So if we have our string moving along, it it can't just break. And if it if it does break, we're we're not really talking about a wave anymore. What we're doing doesn't stops applying if we if the string breaks and it's not connected anymore. So and 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 that makes some some sense. But how do we describe this in a more mathematical way. Well, at each point along along this string, we can figure out figure out what the slope is at that point on the string. And to define the slope, I'll use purple. This is how it's it's the change in the in the y direction divided by the change in the x direction. So, so something with a large slope would change a lot in the y direction, while not changing much in the x direction. And a small slope would, would, would be something more like this, where, where it has to change a lot in the x direction to, to get much change in the y direction. So let's look at this point here, where the wave, where the, where the string is broken. So it's rise, delta y equals some number, some number. Um, we'll call it A. It could be two inches, it could be three centimeters. Um, it's just some some value. It doesn't really matter what it is. But our delta x equals zero. And this is this is one of the first rules you you find out when you start doing doing any kind of algebra is that Defining by zero is undefined. So this wave can just be moving along and then and then suddenly go straight up. It's a it's a discontinuity. So now we know that at all points along this string, the derivative must must be defined for this to for this to be a real string where we're where we're talking about waves in a way that makes sense. So let's think about another requirement. This other requirement I'm trying to draw here is that what's what's happening at this point? Right here. This 
this green this green point here. And I'll I'll draw a line here between these because it it looks almost like that arrow is coming from here, but they're they're separate ideas. So so what's happening right right at this point? Well, here here there's a kink a kink in the uh, in in the string. So this this example or this requirement is a little bit a little bit tougher to think about. But if you, if you think about holding holding this end of the string and you're you're moving it up and down, if you move it up and snap it back down as hard as you can, you'll end up with with a with with a a a thinner peak or it'll be closer to a kink, but but it'll still be rounded a little bit, right? And and, and no matter how hard you whip it, you can't quite get it to be to be a perfectly sharp peak. You can get it you can get it pretty close, but if you zoom in, you know that it will always always be a little curved. And you'd actually have to whip it infinitely hard for for that to be to be a perfectly sharp kink. Or or maybe a slightly different way to think about it is if this string follows the way your hand moves up and down, if you're going to make an infinitely an infinitely sharp, a perfect, a perfectly sharp kink. You'll have to move your hand up, and then it must be moving up, and then instantly be moving back down. And and that would be that would mean you need an infinite force. And and to just to give a little more, a little more justification to that, F equals ma. This is Newton's second law. And and we know that acceleration from from your calculus class that equals the second derivative of position with time. So velocity is how fast your position is changing. That's the first derivative. And then how fast is your speed changing? That's the second derivative. So so you would need to have an infinite acceleration to to be moving from one direction, moving in one direction, and then suddenly just move in the other direction without slowing down, coming to a stop, and moving back. And that would be an infinite force. And so that that's something that physically cannot happen on this string. And so hopefully, hopefully I've explained a little bit. Uh, hopefully I've explained well enough that that makes some sense. But I think if you think about it, you'll you'll realize that that a perfectly sharp peak can't exist in a wave. And so and so once you're convinced that this is a real requirement, let's think about how we can describe that in a mathematical way. So we know that the first derivative must be finite. And so if we say we take the first derivative at this point, right? What's the slope at this point? Well, well, the slope. I mean, here, here you can see what the slope is. But at this point, it it instantly changes to another slope. So it actually has two slopes at this point. So if we take if we take the derivative and there are two values, well, that that just that just doesn't. I mean, I would be stuck on a problem if if that happened to me. And so, um, <clears throat> so. The derivative must be single valued. And and in a in a more clear way I think to say that is if you've you've taken a calculus class, you know that the second derivative is the curvature of the function. The the first derivative is the slope of the function, how fast how fast the y position is changing. And the second derivative is how fast is the slope changing, and that's the curvature. So if we take our second derivative with respect to x of our of our function that describes the wave y of x this must also be finite at a perfect corner the curvature would have to be have to be infinite right at that point so this must also be in, in or must also be finite must be finite And uh, in the next video, 
we'll continue with this this sort of thinking, but we'll do we'll do do a couple different uh, requirements on this wave. Uh, see you in the next video.